During the recording of this episode of Before They Were Famous, Michael McCrudden experiences a malfunction in his robotic heart and had grease leak out of his chest. We apologize for the disturbing images in this video. She will never own a golden retriever, but her mouth will always be a golden receiver as her lips kiss the heads of Trojans. Wow. Before No Name dropped her critically acclaimed debut mixtape, Telephone, featuring songs Yesterday and Diddy Bop. Ooh, you about to get your ass beat. This sound like niggas complaining when they bitches like Razby. Before collaborating with the likes of Lil B, J. Cole, Mick Jenkins, and Chance the Rapper. Before realizing that her stage name included an ethnic slur, prompting No Name to drop the word gypsy from her moniker. No Name grew up in the Bronzeville neighborhood of Chicago, the child of a bookstore owner and a book distributor. But as a kid, she didn't love reading. It wouldn't be until her later teens that she would fall in love with poetry and literature. At the time, she was attending a fancy private high school in Bridgeport, but she didn't love her stuffy school and sought out an after-school program called U Media to nurture her growing creative talents. It was there that she would befriend a tight-knit circle of budding rappers that would inspire her to transition from poetry to rap. Featuring on their tracks would help No Name to build an audience and pay the rent while she spent over three years working on her debut mixtape. What's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of No Name prior to fame, here for you on Before They Are Famous. Now this show is based on requests, so you guys gotta send in who you want me to document next in the comments down below. For a while there, when you guys were saying No Name, I thought it was a joke. But you know, here we go. No Name was born with the name Fatima Warner on September 18, 1991 in Chicago, Illinois. She grew up in her grandparents' home in Avalon Park before moving to her mom's place in the Bronzeville neighborhood of the city when she was 13 years old. Her mom owned a bookstore for about 20 years and met her father because he was a book distributor. It's kind of like the movie You Got Mail, well, playing in a different part of the world. Definitely not with Tom Hanks or the Meg Ryan. From a young age, Fatima was listening to blues artists like Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, and Buddy Guy. She also listened to Michael Jackson, Marvin Gaye, and Tina Turner. She cited Nina Simone and the poet Patricia Smith as artistic influences, but that's not all. J. Electronica, Andre. I'm influenced by Toni Morrison. I'm influenced by early Spike Lee. For high school, Fatima attended a private Catholic school in Bridgeport called De La Salle Institute where tuition costs over $10,000 per year. Then parents be selling a lot of books. As a teen, she became active at Young Chicago Authors and the U Media Project, which was an after school arts program providing young artists a safe space to network and create at Chicago's Harold Washington Library. While there, she developed her poetry skills and made a lot of friends, including a boy named Chancellor Jonathan Bennett, who you would now know as Chance the Rapper. This is also where she met future collaborators like Saba, Malcolm London, Mick Jenkins, Vic Menza, and Donnie Trumpet. I think the Chicago, the Chicago, uh uh, artistic community is very close knit. So in terms of like how we make music and how we interact with each other, very based on like friendship and and respect, and we've been able to push that art into the world on a on a very like independent level. Fatima's interest in poetry led her to performing at open mics and competing in slam poetry contests. This would eventually evolve into a love for rap. I was not thinking about rapping at all, she said, and then I just got really inspired by everyone who was around me. We would freestyle, we would cipher after every open mic, so it didn't matter if you did poetry or if you were a dancer or if you were just going to hop in the cipher. Plus, I was smoking a shit ton of weed, so it was hella fun to do that shit. I don't typically think about myself when I'm thinking about making music as like, I'm a female rapper and this is my role in hip hop. I'm more so just like making art. <laughs> When she was 18 years old while transitioning from poetry to music, Fatima decided to adopt a stage name. At the time she came up with No Name Gypsy, she explained to Fader that the name No Name makes her feel unfeathered to any particular category of art and free to do anything. As for the Gypsy part, well she explains that when she came up with the name, she thought Gypsies were nomadic people who never spent much time in one place. She would eventually come to regret the name and took to Twitter to explain why she's shortening it just to No Name. 
I wanted to wait until my website domain name was changed, but it is important for me to say this. I am no longer using Gypsy in my name. When I first decided what my stage name would be, I was unaware of how racially inappropriate and offensive it is to Romani people. It was never my intent to harm or offend anyone in any way. That is not what I'm about. I'm sorry for any pain I previously caused. Please from now on address me as No Name. In 2010, while still under the name No Name Gypsy, she came in third in the Louder Than a Bomb poetry competition. She would go on to perform at the Vic, the Metro, and Lincoln Hall. While she was making a name for herself in poetry circles, she also showed an interest in other art forms and even opted to study film at Columbia College. Meanwhile, Fatima's friend, Chance the Rapper, he was beginning to blow up in the world of hip hop. In spring of 2012, he released his debut mixtape, 10 Day, and had already recorded the material that would form good enough. He was beginning to work on a new mixtape and invited No Name to feature on the song Lost. I bless myself inside your arms one day. It's what I got there I was when a dress and a silver buttons fade away. The song would appear on Chance the Rapper's critically acclaimed second mixtape, Acid Rap, in 2013. When we recorded it, I didn't know if he was gonna put it on the project. And then after it came out, a lot of I got a lot of followers on Twitter afterwards. The same year, No Name would appear on Mick Jenkins' song, The Truth from Trees and Truths, and would also feature on his song Comfortable the following year. You ain't even gotta ask me, I'm classy. Pina Colada with a blue laffy taffy. I'm rapping to save a life, get that Apache, Indian Remy on the scalp coming out. By this time, No Name was already working on what would become a long, long awaited debut mixtape called Telephone. Basically, my first project ever. The project is supposed to be like a combination of different conversations I've had with people over the phone. It's, it's going to be like an introduction into who I am as an artist. Back in March of 2013, she was promising fans that the project would be released that summer and featured the song Sunday Morning. As it would turn out, the song would not end up on the mixtape and it would not be out for another three years, despite the fact that at the time she told the press that she had half the project recorded already. It seems she decided to toss out these early recordings and for a while she stalled on the mixtape. She was unsure of what direction she wanted to take her music in at the time. It took me three years to like come out with the project in itself, but in terms of the creation, like the art, it was, I had a lot of life experiences a little bit and then finally the art came out. Uh -huh. But while her fans waited for the project, they could hear her feature on the work of other artists like Wu Park, Donny Trumpet, and The Social Experiment, Kirk Knight, Mick Jenkins, and Saba. And between 2015 to 2016, she featured on four other tracks with Chance the Rapper, Jeremiah's The Tragedy, Finish Line, Last Dance, and Israel. 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 That's it. I let the light in beside him. I stand like angel, sparring his trainer for an apathetic halo, apologetic, non-religious, consequential fable. Finally, on July 31st, 2016, No Name released Telephone to rave reviews. The Skinny ranked the mixtape as number 29 on their list of the top 50 albums of 2016, with Noisy listing it among their best 100 albums of the year. Pitchfork gave the song Diddy Bop their best new track honor and ranked the opening track yesterday as the 37th best track of 2016. In 2017, her fans were disappointed to find her among the long list of rising artists not featured on XXL's freshman class cover. One even went as far as to create this image, which she retweeted. But you know, there's always next year. As for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCrad and we got two more videos down below. Be sure to check those out. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in another video. Whoa! Oh my God, it's summer in Toronto. Sweating buckets. Okay, I'm always sweating, but this is ridiculous.